gonna try this one more time. Every time I try to do this video, someone calls and interrupts my broadcast here. Uh, these are called toy blades. I got these at a dollar store, uh, Dollar Trees. In my neighborhood, I'm here in Florida, so they're called Dollar Trees and they're a dollar. Uh, this is what they pretty much come looking like. Uh, nice little silver handle and stuff, makes it look metallic. But the bottom part is glow in the dark. So this is what pretty much kills it and makes it look like a toy. Uh, we're gonna see if we make this look a little bit more realistic for you know Halloween costumes, props, haunted houses, whatever you want to do. Uh, I've gone ahead and uh, primed this one with uh, the Krylon plastic silver metallic paint. Uh, I went ahead and gave it its regular light fading effect first, and then I gave it long strokes. As you can see, it makes the metal, the plastic make it makes the plastic look shiny like metal. Uh, you can see the darks and the lights here. I'm losing light here, so you could barely tell. And then this is what the finishing product could look like, pretty much, after it's done. Uh, a little bit more realistic look. Um, you can tell the difference. Glow in the dark to, you know, new makeover. Uh, There's another one I've just gone ahead and did. In my previous broadcast that I was interrupted in. Uh, came out pretty good. You want to be messy and creative with this the neater you try to do it the more toyish it's gonna look it's gonna be sloppy and messy that's the way to go with this um i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the basic primering part and then the basic uh spray painting part we're gonna be using two products of spray paint uh it's gonna be krylon fusion metallic silver there's about five to six bucks in your local Home Depot or hardware store. And this is Rust-Oleum Paint for Plastic Red. Uh, doesn't really have a red number, but it says no primer needed. It's good stuff. Uh, and that's about $3, it's Home Depot brand. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, have a roll of blue, uh, painter's tape, regular painter's tape. You wanna cover up the handle, just two or three turns, simple two or three turns on it so it doesn't look uh, doesn't get over spray on the handle pretty much uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start with uh, the painting process This stuff uh, dries quick uh, since it is plastic and it is kind of windy where I'm at right now. Uh, dries up pretty quick, so just in a matter of seconds here, you can see the darker strokes, the light strokes. Let this one dry a little bit. I'll put it down. Make sure you guys shake the spray can every time before you start spraying a new object. You want the paint to be nice and sterile. You don't want it to be all cloggy and in the bottom. Okay. This area here, uh, I'm not going to be able to speak through it to give you a tutorial on it since I'm going to be holding the camera with my mouth. Uh, to give it this bloody effect, you're going to see that I'm going to just barely press on the nozzle of the spray can. It's going to look like it's clogged up, drip, whatever. Just make sure you do it on a surface where you're not going to paint the floor. Obviously, I've been doing it here and it's been pretty good. No spray paint on the floor yet. Just a couple of mosquitoes chewing me up. Uh, just like I said, be creative with it. The sloppier, the more realistic it's going to look. All right.
Okay, as you can see, give this one a nice little splatters. Give this one a little bit darker areas. If you tend to use a little bit more on certain areas, it will stay like this when it dries up. This is what it looks like now when it's fresh. This is what it's gonna look like after it's dried up pretty much. It's gonna look thicker in those areas compared to the rest of the areas where it was just a overspray portion of it. And like I said, you guys get creative and messy, simple. You put too much detail into it. It looks good.